The Materials Research Science and Engineering Center is a center funded by the National Science Foundation, um, and the focus of the center is really on materials research of various kinds. The research of our centers focuses on coming up with design rules for the next generation of new materials. And what we are interested in is really understanding systems that are far away from equilibrium. The whole idea is really to get together scientists from different areas of research to bring with them their expertise to attack problems that are beyond the scope of an individual investigator. We have four interdisciplinary research groups that target different areas. Our work at the University of Chicago's MERSEC has pushed the field of granular physics in, in several directions. The most important development, I would say, is the development of this concept of, of a jamming transition that we developed looking at granular materials initially, but then found has much broader applicability. Jamming is a process by which uh, materials attain rigidity, that they suddenly become stuck they used to flow and uh, now they become solid-like, but they don't really change their structure in the process, so they remain amorphous. Initially, the whole concept was developed with the aim to explain a phenomena. And then at some point, of course, you, you come uh, to the realization that using the insights, you might also be able to develop new applications. So we have applied it in the area of soft robotics. So we have been using jamming as an enabling technology for soft robotics. And the second area is to develop new types of granular materials by design. Our approach to design of functional materials is to bring rational aspects to design of complex materials uh, by uh, pre-assembling atoms into small functional building blocks. Each building block carries a function, like a semiconductor, a magnet, a catalyst. And then we develop design rules to bring these individual units together and force them to talk to each other either electronically or magnetically or mechanically or elastically. And this allows us to create unprecedented materials where components and functions can be added, tuned, combined in a very rational and predictable manner. I think it's very important and inherent to the material science and engineering because it uh, introduces new materials to the scene and creates new platforms for materials design. Another interdisciplinary research group focused on how does thin sheets behave. Understanding how the physics and how they behave can allow us to design better way of making these sheets and understanding the materials properties of these sheets. Or you can look at quantum coherence. Can we understand at the quantum level how coherence can be manipulated? Apart from focusing on materials research, our center also has the mission of education outreach as well as interacting with industry. We feel very strongly that the next generation of scientists need to be exposed to really forefront research at an early age and as early as possible. Our center has been really excited about the possibility of having engineering on campus. Our members have been involved in the process from the beginning. The Institute for Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago is the University of Chicago's first engineering program. The reason was to create a partnership with science and medicine here to help try to bring more of the products of the intellectual life of the University of Chicago to real solutions for society. Engineering is a path from science to society, and that's what we're trying to build a faculty that's interested in doing this with molecular level science. The methodology of directed self-assembly relies on the molecules' abilities to form uh, order structures depending on chemistry and sequence to uh, create structural materials. That self-assembly in nature happens in biology, for example, all the times, but it happens in a somewhat uh, disorganized manner. In uh, fabrication, what we try to do is uh, guide or direct that self-assembly to create useful structures for applications. The success of the research has been achieved through the formation of highly interdisciplinary teams. We combine experts in molecular simulation and theory uh, and experts in advanced lithographic techniques 
uh, experts from industry that uh, detail the, the needs of the lithographic processes uh, for their particular applications. And so by understanding the materials and processes at a fundamental level, both theoretically and experimentally, uh, and the needs of the applications, we're able to make substantial progress in using these, these self-assembly methods uh, for specific purposes. In the past, when we've manufactured circuits, for example, we've relied on uh, machines that we use to place certain objects at certain places. In directed self-assembly, we're actually trying to rely on the molecules to do some other work for us. That really is the uh, holy grail of self-assembly. Uh, uh, and I think it is essential for modern fabrications of uh, structural materials. Our organization is unique. We're going to bring together teams of faculty members with no disciplinary boundaries. We're not going to be thinking about what the disciplines are within engineering. We're going to be thinking about what the disciplines can do. The uh, Institute for Molecular Engineering seeks to actually capitalize in our better understanding of molecules and advances in molecular sciences to uh, bring molecular engineering to fruition and really create uh, new paradigms in science and engineering.